One of the top questions that I get asked is whether multifamily or single family is the best investing option. And man, talk about people getting riled up. People are really opinionated on this topic. You know, if you've been investing for a while, you might be sitting there going, of course, multifamily investing is the only way to go, you moron. Or single family home investing is the best option. Everyone knows that, idiot. Okay, calm down before you freak out. Let's look at the pros and cons of each. Everyone's personality is different, and I believe that there is a right answer for everyone, but that doesn't mean that it's the same answer for everyone. I have a little bit of a unique perspective on today's topic because I own single family homes, both long-term and short-term rentals, as well as multifamily homes where I'm the passive investor and I also have some where I'm the active investor. I actually put the deal together. Ironically, at one point in time, I believed each of these investment strategies was the best one out there. It was the one that everybody needed to be doing. It was the best thing since sliced bread. But what do I believe now? I'm gonna share my opinion on that at the end of part two of this series. But first, let's look at the pros and cons of each. I've broken this analysis down into five main components so that you can understand the difference in multifamily and single family homes when it comes to how you buy them, how you analyze each of these, how you finance them, who your tenant is gonna be, and then finally, when, you come, when it comes time to sell, who your actual buyer is gonna be. So it's not very obvious at first, but each of these components is very different depending on whether you're investing in single family or multifamily properties. I've created a one page cheat sheet that can be used as a great reference tool for you. You can get it at the link below and it breaks down the differences in each of these main categories. And I just wanna caveat this right up front that these are generalities. This is generally how each one of these types of properties are gonna go in each of these categories. Every deal is different. I know somebody's gonna get on here and say, yeah, but I did this deal that was totally different. Roger, got it. I'm just speaking in generalities so that you have a good reference tool to know the difference in how each of these deals is gonna go. So in this video, I'm gonna cover the first two categories and then in next week's video, I'll cover the final three categories. Category number one, how to find each of these deals. So. If you're just investing in one of these types of deals, you might think that investing in both would be very similar, but they're actually kind of different and nuanced. So if you first think about single family homes, so the best single family properties typically come from homeowners who have some issue that they need solved. It's an issue either with the home itself or it's a life issue that they're going through like a divorce or they inherited a property or they just need to move suddenly. That's where you're gonna find the best single family homes. For multifamily properties, on the other hand, you're almost exclusively gonna buy from other investors. And if you think about it, there's just a lot less multifamily properties out there to choose from than there are single family homes. And the motivation of a multifamily seller is gonna be much different. The best way to get the best single family deals, in my experience, has just been consistent marketing directly to homeowners, letting them know how you're gonna solve their problem. So we can close quickly, we can close for cash, no cleanup necessary, et cetera, et cetera. These deals typically have a much shorter sales cycle and they're pretty transactional in nature. So you meet a homeowner with a need and you solve it by structuring a deal that makes sense for both of you. Many times the best multifamily properties, on the other hand, come from tired landlords. And these are much more relationship-based transactions, a much longer sales cycle typically. So a lot of times what happens is you might pull a list of all of the specific type of multifamily properties that you wanna buy in a specific area. So for example, you might pull all the 20 to 50 unit properties in a specific region, 
and all the agents also who sell that specific type of property. And you might send all these owners and agents a letter or you might call them all up and let them know that you're interested in buying their property. And a lot of times, just because you know landlords aren't typically as gonna be as impulsive as homeowners, they might not be ready to sell right then, but they wanna build a relationship with different people who might be able to buy their property a year down the road, three years down the road, five years down the road. So you start to build a relationship over time with this small community of multifamily owners in a specific region. And this will eventually lead to one sale, which a lot of times, since landlords own multiple properties, a lot of times, it'll lead to many sales. And also, by the way, a lot of landlords that wanna get out of this, they still wanna be the bank. They still like the cash flow, but they don't wanna be the landlord anymore. So a lot of times, they'll actually finance the deal for you as well. Remember, at the end of the day, as an investor, you get paid to solve the seller's problems. So it's important to think through who the specific seller is gonna be on each of these types of properties and become an expert at solving their problem and you will get paid very well for it. Category number two, how to evaluate each of these two different types of properties. So I recently created this video on how to quickly evaluate a single family property. And with single family properties, really you're gonna mostly be looking at the comps and finishes and emotion are gonna play in much more heavily with single family homes than multifamily properties. So check out that video for a great overview of the process of evaluating a single family property. It's totally different, however, with multifamily property a lot of times an investor won't even look at the property itself when they're evaluating it. They're just gonna look at the financial statement, you know, the income and expenses, and they're gonna come up with an estimate or a, a offer based just on the financial information. There's a lot of evaluation that you can do on a multifamily property, but if you're just getting started, there's really only one equation that you need to know that will allow you to start coming up with values of multifamily properties and start comparing multifamily properties apples to apples. So in order to calculate this equation, you really just need two numbers. So the first one is just what the property makes on an annual basis. So if you take all of the income from all the different income sources, so it might be the rent and the parking and laundry, and then you subtract out all your expenses minus your financing because that's gonna be different for every owner. So you're gonna look at all the expenses minus the financing, whatever's left over at the end of the year, that's called your NOI or your net operating expense. And you can figure out all of the income and expenses typically from sellers in what they call a T12 report. So they're gonna provide you with the T12 or the trailing 12 months of performance and it'll show you all the income and expenses month by month for the previous year. You can look at one year or three years or five years, however far back you wanna go, but just make sure you verify these numbers before you actually close on a property. So then you just take the NOI and you divide it by the cap rate. And the cap rate is just a percentage that's assigned to all of similar types of properties that are selling in that area. So this is dictated by the market. So it's real simple to come up with the cap rate just by talking to other investors who have that type of property, they're familiar with that type of property, or other agents who are selling that type of property to figure out what that specific type of property is trading for, what cap rate it's trading at. So you divide the NOI by the cap rate and that will give you the value for that specific property. Now it's not gonna be exact and also keep in mind the cap rate is gonna fluctuate based on market conditions like interest rate or other economic conditions, but it gives you a good place to start and now you can start comparing multifamily properties to each other comparing apples to apples basically. So that's the first two categories of the main differences between buying multifamily properties and single family homes. If you got something out of this video, I'd love to hear what your biggest takeaway was in the comments below. Also hit the subscribe button and hit the little notification bell next to it because that's gonna tell you when next week's video is released, which is part two of this 
two-part video series that goes through the final three categories of differences between multifamily and single family properties. So until that video is released, you can click on one of the other two videos on this side or, or this side, one of the sides over here and that just popped up and you can continue your rental property investing education. I'll see you soon.